Hi everyone, my name is uh, Athena Goroskiadopoulos. I work with Professor Christos Kozirakis at Stanford, and today I will be talking about uh, end host networking. This is a work in collaboration with many people from Stanford, Cornell, and then Fabrica, the startup that designs accelerated network hardware. So, in a nutshell, as deployment uh, scales become massive and as provision bandwidth becomes very large, the end host network stack has come to the forefront. It has to deliver very high performance in terms of throughput, and at the same time, we want the flexibility to be able to improve the network protocol for each particular deployment and topology needs. Unfortunately, at this today, this has been a hard trade-off. And in this talk, I am presenting zero NIC to achieve both high performance and flexibility simultaneously. The design uh, intuition is to physically separate the control and the data paths but logically bind them. Uh, we present an implementation that combines an FPGA NIC prototype, uses Linux TCP as a protocol, and supports both uh, GPU and CPU applications. And we saw that Zero NIC is able to achieve RDMA level performance, while, however, having the robustness of TCP and the flexibility of software transport layers. So this is the first point in time that we're trying to deploy accelerators at that scale tens of thousands of uh, GPU nodes. It's consisting of multiple GPUs to create emerging tasks such as to generate the image in this slide. At this very large scale, host networking becomes very critical. Each node is delivered uh, a terabit level of throughput, but at the same time, we want to be a part of this uh, evolution. Uh, we want our community to be able to innovate on the network and on the fabric side, and to do this, we need to be able to select uh, among different transfer protocols to tune them, evolve them, or even create new ones and not being uh, locked into what the NIC vendor uh, enforces us. So this talk is in the context of applications with very large flows, such as AI. Uh, so we are defining performance as high throughput. Uh, in our work, we measured that uh, to achieve high throughput, you need a zero copy data path. Zero copy is to transfer payloads directly from the NIC to their final endpoint without any intermediate copies. And we are defining flexibility as the ability to process headers uh, by an arbitrary transport protocol like TCP in an arbitrary execution environment like the kernel. And today's high performance uh, network stacks, such as InfinBad and Rocky, uh, offload all the logic to the NIC to achieve a very high performance zero copy data path, but they offer no flexibility because they bypass uh, all software processing. And as a result, it is very hard uh, to resolve their scalability and congestion challenges on the transport layer. And on the other hand, we have software-based networking, uh, such as a very mature Linux TCP IP stack. Because of its programmability, today we have a plethora of different protocols and different congestion control algorithms. But software-based networking is very, uh, very slow because uh, it quickly gets bottlenecked by uh, CPU cycles executing data copies. In this work, we're trying to get the best out of both worlds, design an end-to-end network stack to have a zero-copy data path while, however, using any transfer protocol implementation. So let's see how we're able to achieve a both performant and flexible end host network stack. The key idea is to physically separate the control and the data path. The data path is what payloads do, and we need a zero copy data path to, uh, uh, directly to application buffers. Uh, the control path should be able to process headers using any transfer protocol implementation. For example, in a GPU application, we need a zero copy path directly to GPU memory, while, for example, headers may be uh, processed by TCP in the kernel or potentially by a different protocol in a completely different execution environment, say a dedicated accelerator. Our design should support all those notions. Uh, this control and data path separation is not new to the community. It is actually necessary to achieve zero copy, but it is not enough. Naive splitting of uh, the header and the payload of the packet, having the payload to land in memory and headers uh, to go for uh, protocol processing is not enough. Uh, this is why existing solutions are either very limited uh, or they lack flexibility or they have constraints that make them unworkable for most applications. And the challenge is on the receive side. Uh, 
For zero copy, the user application needs to post uh, buffers and register them with a NIC hardware, but packets on the receive end might not arrive from the network in the same order as uh, uh, buffers are posted. Also, the payload sizes might not exactly match uh, the sizes of these buffers, and we have to reason about incoming packets potentially before uh, transport protocol processing. So we need zero copy with zero limitations. We need to know exactly to which buffer and which offset within this buffer to TMA data. We need to correctly proxy the protocol decisions to data, even if the protocol never touches uh, this data. And uh, we need this uh, without modifying the application interface. So I'm going over the design. And uh, since the receive side is uh, the hard part, I'm going to walk the lifetime of uh, uh, a received packet. So assume that the packet arrives into the NIC, the NIC splits it into header and payload, and the DMAs directly the payload into the correct uh, memory uh, location in the correct user buffer. The header is enqueued in what we call the control stack, and the control stack forwards the header for transfer processing. When the transfer protocol semantics allow, uh, we're able to give a notification to the application layer via the provider library to allow the application to safely consume uh, uh, the data that have landed. So end-to-end, -end, our uh, end host network stack consists, I'm reading this figure bottom up, of a NIC that establishes a zero copy data path uh, to arbitrary endpoints a control stack that is responsible uh, to maintain correctly protocol semantics, and the provider library uh, that implements popular APIs for transparent application integration. For example, in our work, we support uh, both streaming and uh, uh, message uh, semantics. For the software design, uh, as you might know, uh, our DMA stacks like Infinibat and Rocky use a single queue pair to connect, the NIC, to connect the NIC with the application layer, and they embed the protocol within the NIC. Instead, our design essentially unlocks the boundaries of the NIC for the transfer protocol. We allow the transport to execute anywhere, and we have now two sets of queues. One set of queue connecting between the NIC and the transfer protocol execution environment, and one set of queues to connect the transport to the application. And adding this second queue is what essentially allows us to handle the ordering issues in the transport layer and decouple them from data placement within application buffers. For our hardware design, instead of, instead of dropping or buffering out of order packets, our NIC hardware is able to find their correct memory address and DMA payloads directly as they arrive. And then we let the control stack to later expose the data to the application layer. I do not have the time to go into many details, but in essence, all the data structure required uh, for the exact calculation uh, of memory addresses in the NIC. Uh, to support 10,000 zero copy flows requires less than 10 megabytes of NIC, uh, of NIC state, which is much less than modern NIC specifications. Um, and unlike our DMA stacks like Infinibat and Rocky, that they try to avoid network perturbations at all costs, for example, Infinibat with a very expensive lossless fabric, and Rocky with mechanisms like PFC that uh, uh, do not scale very well, our design actually embraces uh, packet perturbations, for example, drops, rearrangements in the network. And let me give you an example uh, of how this works. So on the left side of this figure, we see the network stack of uh, a receiver. And on the right side, we see a sender sending some packets over the network. The receiver application will invoke some receive calls, as usual, that correspond to user buffers, uh, in this example, in uh, GPU memory. Uh, in this example, we have two receive calls with uh, uh, two corresponding buffers. The provider library is going to create a receive request, and the control stack will uh, enqueue it to the NIC. Each receive request contains a structure that we call a memory segment uh, that essentially contains metadata about each user buffer. And memory segments uh, within the NIC form a linked list uh, that the NIC can parse. So packets arrive in the NIC. Uh, the NIC uses a per flow cursor, combines it with the packet sequence number, and parses its memory uh, segment list. 
Then it identifies the payload's expected memory address and DMAs the payload directly. The header is enqueued to the control stack for transfer processing. Now, assume that packets are reordered uh, in the network. Their payloads will be still DMA directly to their intended uh, memory location. And the transport layer above is responsible to handle ordering, wait until all holes are filled, for example, in, uh, in order transports, and then allow the control stack to notify the application when buffers are fully filled and safe to be consumed. So let's now go into our zero-nic prototype implementation and its evaluation. Uh, our Xeronic prototype is consisting of a NIC that we implement on top of uh, a commodity FPGA. It supports 100 gigabps Ethernet ports. We support zero copy to both CPU and GPU memory. Our control stack that I have been talking about is implemented as the Linux kernel driver of the NIC, and it invokes the TCP protocol in the kernel. We do not have to make any modifications to the protocol code. Our provider library is a C library that implements uh, popular APIs such as the lib ibverbs API uh, to allow for easy application integration. In our first experiment, we present a, uh, a single flow micro benchmark. Uh, in this case, TCP, with all the available uh, optimizations for high throughput, is able to achieve uh, 45 gigabps or maybe less, and is limited because it is bottlenecked by a CPU. If we uh, uh, profile this carefully, we see that the majority of the CPU cycles go to the mem copy, transferring payloads between kernel and user space. In contrast, Rocky, that is able to offload all processing to the NIC, is able to, without any CPU utilization, saturate the link bandwidth. Zero NIC is also able to closely match Rocky's performance with very low cost. However, Zero NIC here uses TCP in the kernel. And despite using uh, 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 software processing, we have very low CPU utilization, actually 17% of a single hyperthread, because we bypass the data copy. At the same time, Xeronic enjoys the robustness of the TCP protocol uh, in software, while Rocky, for example, is hard coding its protocol in the, within the NIC. Next, we present an end-to-end -end benchmark. Here are different uh, machine learning models in an end-to-end -end, uh, training benchmark. On the x-axis, you see different distributed data parallel models. And we see again that Zero-Nic is able to closely match uh, uh, Rocky's uh, performance. This result essentially tells us that we can have GPU direct, however, with the robustness of TCP, and very critically, we were able to run this application without any modifications on the application layer because PyTorch uses Nico, uh, which uh, uh, invokes the lib ibverbs API that our provider implements. We were able to run this without any modifications, neither to the Python application nor to the Nico library. And also, Zero Nick is able to transparently improve more applications, for example, uh, here we saw our performance in a Redis benchmark. And while traditional TCP on the green line is very slow, Xeronic is able to closely match the very high RDMA performance, while, however, having the benefits and the robustness of TCP in the kernel. So in this talk, I presented the design and implementation of an end-to-end -end network uh, stack that provides simultaneously both performance and flexibility. Uh, more broadly, I'm hoping that uh, uh, this work unlocks uh, the pathway to our research community to conduct work on the control side without having to worry about performance. Thank you very much for your attention.